Does, is the death of Benazir Bhutto, does it merit that much attention in this country and elsewhere? I think it does because it, she was, in a sense, the best hope for a moderate, reasonably secular Pakistan in tune, in tune with the rest of the world and Islam uh, that Pakistan had produced in a long time. She had many failings, but I think on balance she was going to be, she would have been a better leader her third term had she won or had she be, had that opportunity. And I think her death by this way is really strengthening the forces of darkness in Pakistan. And they're going to see this as a great victory for her. And the, the, the ineptness of the government in protecting her or coming up, coming up with any reasonable solutions, I think, is, is going to come back to haunt them. I, I think there will be more changes in Pakistan, more dramatic changes in Pakistan. And I don't expect the present setup to remain as it is now. Uh, Mr. Nawaz is a, is a native of, of Pakistan. What did she mean for your country, and how does that change with her death? I think she felt that she had a mission that she needed to fulfill. These are all the, the ideas that she thought that she should have implemented in her first two terms. Uh, because when I spoke with her before she left for Pakistan uh, last fall, uh, this is what was guiding her, that she was unafraid of the risks, uh, which she was also quite cognizant of, but she was ready uh, to go in and to battle for what she thought was an opportunity to change the way Pakistan is operated and run. Mr. Hussein, also a native of Pakistan, you worked for Benazir Bhutto's father. What did she mean for your country? Well, she was um, young, she was a woman, she was educated. She was very controversial also, which means that today it's probably not the day and that not the time to look at her flaws and uh, but she represented the contradictions of Pakistan's history. In what way? If you look at Pakistan's history of the last 60 years, it has been ruled by a small elite, an elite consisting of the feudals, the military and senior civil servants. Largely they have disenfranchised the people of Pakistan. It has been a very narrow elite which has ruled Pakistan, which has neglected human development, which has neglected uh, education. After 60 years of independence, 50% of Pakistani adults are illiterate. 50%? 50%. Pakistan rates among the last seven in the index of human development of, uh, of, the, of the UNDP. And Benazir Bhutto, Musharraf, and the entire leadership is responsible for it because of the neglect of the people of Pakistan and the lack of linkage between the establishment and the masses in general. Stephen Cohen, given that, why was she the hope that you just described? Super she would have given a good fight, and I think she would have held her own. She understands how the world operates, and I think she was intelligent enough to manage that. She would have made compromises, but I think she would have made some progress as well. Shujana was, we keep hearing there's no obvious successor to her in her political party. Who does take her place? That's a big question, because uh, she was chairperson of the People's Party for Life, and really did not allow the emergence of a, a strong leadership underneath her. There are obviously some leaders whose names have, have emerged uh, who have been mentioned. Uh, the most famous of them is Etazaz Essen. Unfortunately, he is still uh, under house arrest. And I'm sorry, he, what is his name again? Etazaz Essen, yes. who was the president of the Supreme Court Bar Association and a member of her party, but he's under house arrest. He is probably the most well known uh, within the country and now outside the country, uh, but he cannot operate. Well, given that, and given uh, what we discussed earlier, uh, Mr. Uh, Sharif saying he's not sure... He so, let's not forget that uh, while Benadir Bhutto, Nawaz Sharif talk about democracy, their own parties are undemocratic. They did not allow new leadership to emerge. And I want to come back on that similar point I asked you a minute ago. Given that, how could Benazir Bhutto have taken this country in a different direction? Well... And she might have presented the slide downward, but in terms of rapid movement in a more modern direction towards democratization, more equal society, it would have been very incremental. But again, politics is a matter of inches, not, not miles. And I think she would have moved, or she would have tried to move Pakistan a matter of inches. And she would have found allies in the military and in the civil society as well. And let me come back to that first question to you, Steve Cohen, and that is, um, why does this matter so much to the rest of the world? 
to the United States, to the wider region, to the fight uh, against the terrorists, the Islamic uh, extremists no. in Afghanistan. It's not just that a democracy or a, a proto-democracy Pakistan has lost a leader by assassination. That resonates in the U.S. and a lot of other countries. It's that the future of Pakistan is at stake. And if Pakistan continues in its present direction, it could be, will be the most dangerous country in the world. That was the conclusion of Because Obama. of nuclear weapons? Uh, nuclear weapons, export of terrorists, uh, spinning off ethnic groups, losing parts of its provinces, mass migration to India, a whole bunch of things could happen. And that, and that's, that's not a, that's not a, that may be a worst case outcome, but it's increasingly a likely outcome for Pakistan.